Turning now to a major non-decision by the Supreme Court. Same-sex couples started marrying Monday afternoon, not long after the justices opened their fall term by declining to review same-sex marriage cases from five states. Virginia, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, Indiana, and Utah. In those cases, federal appeals court rulings held that state laws banning same-sex marriage were unconstitutional. By not taking the cases, the high court is allowing same-sex marriages in those five states to go forward. Meanwhile, six other states where those appeals courts have jurisdiction will almost certainly follow the precedent and allow same-sex marriages as well. For more, I'm joined here in New York by Al Jazeera America legal contributor Jamie Floyd. Great to see you as always, Jamie. Great to see you. Much of what's been written describes court observers as stunned by the fact that the court decided not to take these cases. Are you surprised? I'm never wrong, Antonio, but today I was wrong. <laughs> I, I said earlier today on Al Jazeera America that they were taking one of these cases. Lo and behold, they did not take one of these cases. But I... I I have to say, in not deciding a gay marriage case, they essentially made a big decision because now these marriages have already started. People lining up within hours of hearing that the court will not rule on gay marriage because that essentially means that the law goes into effect in those states where stays were in place. And so those bans are lifted in places where there was a ban and in places where gay marriage was legal, it now goes forward until in the future, the Supreme Court does take one of those cases, and all the experts agree eventually the Supreme Court will pass on gay marriage. Uh, we'll, we'll pass, you mean, we'll make a ruling at some point. <laughs> right, on not marriage. take a pass. Right, exactly. <laughs> we'll have to which is what make they did, a ruling. Which is what they did right. today, but it's a pretty significant pass because yes. what they did today was say, okay, all the other federal appeals courts so far had been in agreement. They've all right. struck down any bans on gay marriage. So that's why right. should we take it? Everybody's in agreement. Right? right, that's right. And you know what? I think we were all a little arrogant uh, now that I look back on it. And I was in some pretty good company. Uh, there was no one who thought that the Supreme Court would not take a gay marriage case. But the number one thing they look for, as you suggest, is conflict in the lower courts. And there was no conflict. Every circuit that had looked at this had ruled in the same way, had essentially sided with gay marriage advocates. The reason we thought they would take it, first of all, it's a huge issue. Big issue sure. There's a legacy potential for John Roberts. This is his 10th year as Chief Justice. But also, this is what was unusual. Not only were opponents of gay marriage asking them to take the case because they had lost below, but proponents who had won were asking them to take the case. Everyone wanted them to take the case and rule one way or another on gay marriage, and so we thought they'd take it. Because people wanted, exactly, wanted clarity from clarity. the Supreme Court. Now, the only way we're likely to get clarity from the Supreme Court uh, assuming we ever ended up needing it, because we'll get, get to that in a minute. But uh, the only way we'll get clarity is if some federal appeals court decides to uphold the ban so that the law starts. Oh, yeah. And so that the conflict begins. And there's a place where that could happen, and that's Louisiana, because that's kicking around down there in the Fifth Circuit. District court has ruled. It's still got to go up to the circuit court. That's a more and conservative federal more appeals More conservative, court. and many people are saying they will rule the other way. Uh, Justice Ginsburg, in a speech the other day, likened this issue to the anti-miscegenation laws, uh, Loving versus Virginia, 1967, the seminal case there. It kicked around for many, many years before the Warren court took that case and she suggested that this issue will do the same. All right, let's go down the list of what's going on throughout the country because now with this ruling the number of states that allow same-sex marriage uh, moves from 19 to 24. To, to 24 and, and then we have six, uh, six other states, North Carolina, West Virginia, South Carolina, Wyoming, Kansas, Colorado, fairly conservative states but all those states where they are bound by federal appeals court rulings that have struck down these uh, anti these gay marriage bans so 30 states in effect with 30 states uh, has the fat lady sung is it over well, she's singing now yeah, that's right loudly. <laughs> for a while she's going to be singing and i like what the governor of utah said he said look this is what the law is as of now we should all treat each other with respect and kindness going forward until we see some reason to act differently under the law of the land, which is the law that the U.S. Supreme Court may ultimately make 
or they may not, as you point out, but we must do what the law of the land requires and do it respectfully and kindly and treat each other with respect and dignity. That's in Utah. So I think that that's the way we should proceed. And I think we have some clarity today, even though they chose not to take one of these seven cases. And one other thing that involves the Supreme Court that I want to touch on, yeah. it's not same-sex marriage, is, uh, involves Facebook. Facebook. And there are a couple of layers here. The court agreed to look at a case about whether violent images and threatening language on Facebook can actually be uh, something that's considered a truth threat or if it's constitutionally protected free speech. But then a Virginia appeals court last week ruled about Facebook, about the whole liking issue when you like something right. on Facebook. And they said that that is speech, that you are free free to do whatever you want and if you you want to like a political party that nobody can then go fire you from your job right. because you like that political party. Fa Facebook and First Amendment and social media and First Amendment I think we're going to see more, more and cases. more of that in front of the court. This this case that's in front of the US Supreme Court with the First Amendment is fascinating because this man spent 44 months in prison right. based on, on what he said. Right. In public, this was a public posting on Facebook. It's not I as though it was pretty ugly. It was very ugly. Yeah. But he linked it to rap music. He said, "I'm an aspiring rap artist." Uh, he made some actual threats, not just against his ex-wife, but against an FBI agent and uh, a kindergarten class. But all of it, he said, was art. And it's really going to be interesting to see if the court sees this as traditional First Amendment speech. And they've been very, very they're conservative court, but, but very progressive very on, First, on Amendment. First Amendment rights. But now in the context of social media and modern technology, a whole new ball of wax. It's really going to be yeah. interesting. We're going to see more and more of it in all the courts, including the U.S. Supreme on Court. On free speech, and I suspect other issues in the future, yeah. too, that we're going to see a lot more on social media. Jamie Floyd, always good to see you. Yeah, always fun. Thanks.